keep on believing God and God will bring you out more than a conqueror. Oh, if Jesus 
Jesus can't fix it. Yeah, 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 yeah. sent and raised up, amen, for this hour, our newly appointed president of Men's Day. We enjoyed Elder Jones' labor, amen, and, and all that he contributed, amen, to the progressive church of God in Christ, amen. But now we, we thank God for a new leader, amen, and we pray that God will impact him, amen, to truly impact our Men's Day worship. A man of God, amen, that likes to, to, to reel, amen, those hidden jewels out of the word of God. A man, amen, that loves God with his whole heart. Amen. We thank God for our elder, Don Carter. And I want you to say amen as he comes. He comes in his own way. Amen. Our own elder Carter. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. God bless you. God bless you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know. What I do without the Lord? Well, I don't know. I don't know what I do. the law. 
Listen, listen. I got one verse. I got one verse. Listen. I've been talked about. I've been criticized. I've been mistreated. And I've been abused. But I know someone that I can tell all. for what you've already done. We praise you for what you're going to do. We ask God that you would have your way. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Blot out our transgressions. God, we pray right now that you would go forth and that you would speak through your servant. Bind everything in me that's not like you in the name of Jesus. God, have your divine will and your divine way in my life. In the name of Jesus, God, speak to your people. In the name of Jesus, God, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all of the glory. We will tell the world that you did it. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. We honor the Lord and we certainly praise him. We thank God for our pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our pastor, Dr. Tolliver, our assistant pastor. Amen. Elder Bean, to all of the men of God today, to our district missionary. Amen. To our deacon brethren. Each of you that make up this setting on today, it's certainly a blessing. Our church mother, amen, God bless you today. Amen. It is a pleasure and a privilege. Thank God for Sister Carter. Amen. Thank God for Sister Carter. Amen. We enjoyed the wedding on yesterday. Pastor did a wonderful job. Congratulations, Deacon Murray. Amen. And I thought about how that Sister Carter and I, we, this year will be 13 years. Amen. 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 That she's put up with me. And I know I'm not the easiest little man to live with. Amen. But she came into my life. I had three boys. I had just lost a wife. I was a little complexed. That's a good explanation. But she's been right by my side, and I thank God for her. I thank God for her son and grandson. Amen. And I thank God that her son has asked me to be a mentor in his life. And I thank God. Amen. He asked me things, and he come to me, and he allowed me to correct him. And he don't get angry with me. And he's accepted me for who I am. And he respect me. And I thank God for that. And I come to realize that that's something that you cannot demand. You can't make nobody 
respect you. I've learned that in my 64 years. I celebrated 64 years, January 2nd. I turned 64. And I know that you cannot demand anything from anybody. You can't make nobody do nothing. I couldn't make Sister Carter be with me. But she's with me because she loves me. And I thank her for that. And I thank God today that God gave me a message to share with you. And I praise God that he yet gives me things. He gives me things and he'll work with me. And first he preaches it to me. And I told Sister Carter, this one here will probably cause some to kind of be a little bothered, maybe, maybe not. But if you're saved, I think you may just say, ouch, and go on. Because it's straight from the word of God. And I thank God today. When I sang that song, I don't know what I would do without the Lord. I mean that from the very depths of my heart. Because I remember another a man that was in this body. He's in there. Sister White is D.C. They, that the fellas know him on the streets. I see some sometime. And they say, D.C., you look different. And I'm so thankful for that. Because the Bible said that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creature. I don't look like I used to look. I don't act like I used to act. I don't do the things I used to do. And the only reason I don't do them is because of the Spirit of God that's dwelling on the inside of me. And I tell them, it's not me that you see, but it's the Spirit of Christ that's dwelling on the inside. That's what you see. And I thank God for that. We're not going to be before you very long. We're going to ask you, if you would, to go with us to the gospel according to John, the eighth chapter, John 8. And we will commence our reading at verse number 37. John 8 and 37, and we thank God for Deacon Murray. And if he don't mind, we're going to ask, if you will, to read us John, 30, John 8, verses 37 and 38. Jesus said, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but you're trying to kill me. reason that you're doing it is because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. May God add a blessing. Reading of his word. We would like to just leave a thought with you today. I know who I am. I know who I am. When the Lord began to work with me on this message, with this message, it was somewhat troublesome, troublesome at first. Because he began to reveal things to me. He told me to propose a question. Do you know who you are? Are you who people say you are? So many are living and conducting themselves in the way that they have been instructed or in a way that they saw their father or their mother, their sister or their brother, their auntie or their uncle or their friend or somebody, and as a result of it, they are pattern, they're pattering themselves after that individual. Do you know who you are? I won't ask for a show of hands, but how many either heard or have been told you just like your daddy 
Are you just like your mama? I heard it on several occasions when I was coming up. And as a result of it, I began to imitate daddy. I had a cousin. They called him Dirty Red. I think that says a lot right there. <laughs> Paul was about 6'5", 280. He was a bad boy. And when I say bad boy, I mean Paul was a bad boy. I knew it. Everybody in the neighborhood knew it. All of the family members knew it. He was a bad boy. And as a result of it, I was younger, and a lot of the younger guys wanted to be like Paul for whatever reason. They wanted to be like Paul. As a result of it, I patterned myself after Paul. I was not brought up in the church, unfortunately. I did go to church, St. Matthew's Baptist. I went to church. I was around the church on several occasions. But the church was never in me. It was never really in me. So as a result of it, I patterned myself after what I saw. You become a product of your environment. My family members, my father, my mother, my auntie, my brothers, not my brothers, my cousins, uncles and aunts, they were alcoholics. That's what they did. So as a result of it, when I got old enough, and before I was really old enough, because they would leave stuff, and I'd get it. I did. I can talk about me. Is that all right? And so when I got old enough to drink, that's what I did. When I would get up in the morning, and that's when you could buy a 40 ounce, I'd go get a 40. Every time you saw me, I had a 40. Wherever I'd go, I had a 40. That was a part of my attire. I drank daily. We'd go play ball and doing different things, but me and my friends would drink. We'd pass the bottle around and didn't think nothing about it because that's what we did. So it was okay. That's who I was, who I thought I was. And as a result of it, I tried to imitate. I tried to be like the ones that I saw drinking and doing those things. And I thought that that was who I was. That's, I thought that was who I was supposed to be. I know who I am today. Our assignment for this message is to prompt you to consider and accept who you are. In spite of what you have been told or in spite of what you have been led to believe, we will inform you from the word of God who you are. If you are not saved or if you're not a born again child of God, then you are of your father, the devil. That's your father, whether you like it or not. We read there in John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. We wonder sometimes why people do things that they're doing. You don't have to teach a baby to be mischievous. You don't have to teach them how to do wrong. We were born, the Bible said, we were shaped in iniquity. Our mother conceived us in iniquity. We were just born sinful. 
whether you like it or not. Maybe you're saved today, and the problem many of us have is we think we've been saved all our lives. We think we've been Miss Goody Two-Shoes or Mr. Goody Two-Shoes all our lives. We don't want nobody to go into that closet. Oh, my. And somebody that do know you come to you and say, you, you, you remember that you don't, well, shh. <laughs> we don't want nobody to know that. But I don't mind letting people know that I've not been saved all my life. I realize today that I am not a dope dealer. I'm not a thug. I'm not a thief. I wasn't even meant to be that. But I was led to believe by the enemy, the devil is a liar. And he come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He wants you to think that you're not this and you're not that. He wants you to think that you can't be or you shouldn't be. But he's just a liar. The Bible said that God made us in his image originally. Now that's what the Bible said. I know who I am. In Ephesians, from another bad boy, the second chapter, and I enjoy reading works from the Apostle Paul. In the second chapter of Ephesians, verses 4 through 10. Paul gave us to know that we were shaped in iniquity. Second chapter of Ephesians, I'm sorry. Second chapter of Ephesians. All right, y'all just pray with me. The devil is a liar. I told my wife, we, we, I don't never exactly tell her exactly what the Lord has given me, but I told her this one might kind of cause a little bit of controversy when I say the devil is your father. That's what the, Jesus said. He was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees in the 8th chapter of John. Let me just share this with you, and you should read it when you have an opportunity. The 8th chapter, there was a woman that they brought to Jesus. They had caught her in the very act of adultery. Scribes and Pharisees decided that they were going to put Jesus on front street, try to see if they can get him caught up in something. Brought that woman before him and said, Jesus, listen, look, look, look. We caught her. And I'm persuaded that one or two of them probably had been with her before too. A lot of times that's the way folk is. They throw rocks and hide their hands. But they brought this woman to Jesus and they said, we caught her in the very act of adultery. Now the law said she should be stoned. What you say? What you think we ought to do with her? Jesus don't look at the outward appearance. He looks at your heart. A lot of us are going around and we're condemning folk. We're talking bad about people. We're running everybody down. And we ain't no better. We got a beam in our eyes, and, and we run around, and, and we, we trying to run other folk down. Let me stay with the word. We need to stop talking about everybody else. We need to clean up around our own front door. Amen. So I've learned to fix me. That's who I'm worried about. I want to make certain that I know where I am who I am, what I'm supposed to be, and what I should be. I am saved today. I know I'm saved. This woman, they brought her, and Jesus didn't even bother. He looked up at them. 
And you read it when you get a chance. He just looked back down. He kept on messing around in the dirt. He wasn't thinking about it. And they wanted him to condemn her. Jesus said, you that is without sin. There are some rocks over there. You that is without sin, you throw the first stone. And he put his head back down. They began to look at one another and say, well, I, I guess I can't throw nothing yet. I said, well, hey, you know, I was over there yesterday. <laughs> and I know you can't throw because I saw you were leaving when I came. <laughs> they all just walked away. Ended up the woman just was there by herself, and he looked up, and they were gone. Jesus told the woman to go and sin no more. But in essence, what he also wanted her to do was accept Christ. When you accept Christ into your life, and we're moving farther, he changes you. You are no longer like you used to be. Anybody that's saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and if they're still acting like they did before they got saved, they better come on back and get another, they say, get another dip. But they need to come back and get another dip, get another refreshing. Because when Christ comes into your life, I know he changes you. I know he does because he changed me. I always look at myself. I don't try to judge nobody. I don't try to condemn nobody else. I look at me and see how I'm dealing with things. I was not born a drug dealer. I was trying to get to Ephesians 2, second chapter, and I'm there. The very first verse, the Apostle Paul said, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and in sin. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also ye had conversation in time past in the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Naughty by nature. That's just the way you were. You act like that because you didn't know no better. I did a lot of things that I did because a lot of things I knew was wrong, but I didn't have the spirit of Christ dwelling on the inside. Jesus said, all power is given unto me. And when you got the power of God down on the inside, you got strength enough. To say no. You got strength enough not to have that drink. You got strength enough to put that dope down. I know. For years, I had a cocaine addiction. And I thought that that was what I was supposed to do. I thought I had to do it. But when Christ came into my life and condemned me, sister, I, I couldn't do it no more. I just don't feel right doing it anymore. And it's not because of me, but it's because of who Christ has made me to be. I know who I am. I know who I am. In conclusion... I think I would just like to share just a few things with you. Romans 8 and 16, the writer declared that I am 
a child of God. Psalms 107 and 2 said, I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Colossians 1, 13, 14 says that I am forgiven. Ephesians 2 and 8 say that I am saved by grace through faith. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. Romans 5 and 1 said that I am justified. And the reason that I am justified is because of what Christ did. He created justification for me. Romans, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 said that I am sanctified. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 said that I am a new creature. I'm not the way that I used to be. 2 Peter 1 and 4 said that I am a partaker of his divine nature. I heard the word of God say, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. I've got a brand new mind today. I can think the way I used to, but my brand new mind said don't do that no more. And as a result of it, I don't do it no more. Galatians 3.13 said that I am redeemed from the curse of the law. Colossians 1.13 said that I am delivered from the power of darkness. Satan don't have no control over me no more. Romans 8.14 said that I am led by the Spirit of God. John 8.36 said that I am free from all bondage. Psalms 91 and 11 said, kept in my safe. I'm kept in the safety wherever why I have, I'm in God. Philippians 4.19 say, I am getting all my needs met by Jesus. I don't have to go to the world anymore. I don't need nothing from nobody but God. Lift your hand and say, yes, Lord. First Peter 5 and 7 said, I am casting all my cares on Jesus today. When that's something I find that I need, I've learned to go to Jesus with it. Ephesians 6 and 10 said that I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm so glad today that I know to go to Jesus with it. Philippians 4.13 said that I am doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm walking in his strength. I'm talking in his strength. I'm living in his strength. Romans 8.17 said that I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Galatians 3.13 said that I am an heir to the blessings of Abraham. Deuteronomy 28.12 said that I am observing all doing the Lord's commandments. 1 John 5.11 and 12 said that I am an heir of eternal life. Ephesians 1 and 3 said that I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. This is one that really resonates in my mind. 1 Peter 2, 24 said I am healed by his stripes. Ah. Luke 10, 19 said that I am exercising my authority over the enemy. Deuteronomy 28, 13 said, above all, I am not beneath. God said that he made me to be the head and not the tail. Ah, Romans 8, 37 said, I am more than a conqueror. 
Matthew 16, 19 said, I am establishing God's word here on earth. Revelation 12 and 11 said that I am overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I'm an overcomer today because of Jesus today and because he lives on the inside of me. I can go forward today. I can do all things today. I can walk in him today. I talk in him today. I'm so glad that I know him for myself. I know. I said I know. I know who I am. I'm a child of the king. My father's rich. And everything down here belongs to my father. Uh, oh, I got, I got a page or two of them that I went through and just found out. I am somebody because God made me somebody and I don't care what the word or the world say to you you're somebody if you're born again if you got Christ in your life and remember if you don't have Christ you are of the devil you belong to him and he controls you. That's the Bible. Whether you like it or not. A lot of us say, I, I ain't that bad. If you're not saved, then you're not of God. You're not of Christ. God bless you today. I know who I am. I know who I am because God made me who I am. Maybe there are some today that's willing to admit to yourself that you're not who you thought you were or you're not who you ought to be. The scripture said that everyone that said Lord, Lord is just not going to make it in. We've got many that have come down and they have prayed that prayer and they said, I'm saved. But they went back out into the world and continued to do the same thing. It's one thing to pray that prayer, but it's another thing to live this thing. I was telling my wife, it's one thing for me to go over to the car lot, put money down, Sister Tevis, on a brand new car drive it home and everybody say oh man that's a nice car you got I like that that sure look good but I got to pay for it I got to make them monthly payments it's the same way it is with salvation you got to live this thing you can't just walk around and say I'm saved I came I went to the altar I accepted Christ in my life so I'm saved that don't just give you the right to go out there and do anything Paul said that, no, no, that, that ain't the way it works. God forbid. You've got to allow Christ to come into your life. And I'm a living witness. It takes time. I die daily. I tell people all the time, Elder Carter have not been in this pulpit all my life. I haven't been saved all my life. I don't act like I act now. A few years ago, I didn't act like this. You wouldn't have liked me. About 30 years ago, I got saved in 79. But before I was ever saved, I did a lot of things. I share a lot of things, but a lot of them I don't share that I did do. But today, I know who I am. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I am. I don't have to wonder. And the worst thing in the world is for you to come up before the Lord one day and say, Lord, you know, I, I, I was in the pulpit every Sunday. I went to Bible study. I was there on Thursday nights. I witnessed the people. And for him to say, you might well go on about your business. I, ain't, I, I don't even know you. 
depart from me. I never knew you. Do you know who you are? Does the Lord know who you are? Do you know him today? Are you living according to the word of God? Are you his? That's a personal question that you have to ask yourself. I refuse to set up in this church and come, as I said, since 79. I wouldn't dare go to before the Lord and go to hell. I'm honest. Y'all have to forgive me. I had a bishop, Stuart, used to tell me, little brother Claude, in my revivals, I would tell him, if I wasn't going to be saved, you wouldn't have to wonder if I wasn't saved because you would know I wasn't saved no more. I'd be right on back out there doing the things I was doing. But I'm saved today. I know I'm saved. I'm living for the Lord all I know how. The things that I can fix, I'm working on them. Or I've already fixed them. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have just passed away. I choose not to drink because I don't think God wants me to. That's me. Now, if you do or if you drink or you smoke or whatever, that's your business. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you, but I'm going to stay with what the Word said. That's what I'm living by. I don't deal with homosexuality and all that. I know that Jesus and God don't like it. Now, you deal with it any way you want to. God said it's wrong. So how you deal with it and how you accept it, that's you and your business. But you got to see God. You got to see him. And you're going to have to stand before him. And you will be judged, not by me, but by him. We want to give an opportunity for those of you, whoever you are, wherever you are, that's honest enough. To say that I'm not saved. I'm not born again. I'm not a Christian. And I know I'm not. But I want to be. We're going to ask you if you will to come down. And listen as you come. If you will come. He said if you be ashamed of me. Before men. I'll be ashamed of you. Before my father. God bless you. God bless you. There are others. There are others. Whether you come or not, there are others. Listen, let me tell you one thing. We are dying. We're leaving here. Life is not promised. We are on the verge of a brand new year. I don't know what this year is going to bring. A lot of people are concerned about Donald Trump. I'm not concerned about no Donald Trump. My God is in control of Donald Trump. My God owns everything. One writer said, I once was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed.